Hello everyone, I am Torior and welcome to my newest Hearts of Iron 4 video, and the theme of this one is the Battle of Berlin. This video is special for three reasons. Reason number one, we're playing as Poland, my country, and also my favorite country to play. There are some changes coming up to Poland, we will address them when they happen, but for now, let's just play good old Poland. Reason number two, sponsor is tightly connected to the theme, but we'll get back to that in a moment. And finally, reason number three, I am going to be divulging some personal family history, because one of my ancestors, my great-grandfather to be exact, actually fought in the Battle of Berlin, so while playing this game I'm going to be telling you bits of his story. But before we begin, a message from our sponsor. Now, this video is brought to you by Enlisted. It's a unique take on the World War II team FPS because of the squad mode. Essentially you play as a leader of a squad of soldiers. You get two or three additional soldiers that follow you around and assist you and if you get killed as you can see you can take over as one of your squad mates that is still alive. And I think that's pretty great. There's roughly four times as many people on the battlefield as there are players. If you get killed you don't just respawn back at the respawn point. You can continue. It's quite easy to get way more kills than deaths and they're still satisfying because these are not just bots. They're either players or squad assisting bots. They go where you go, don't just attack blindly. Long story short, this is a very enjoyable game. Now for how it ties into the video. Enlisted has a new Battle of Berlin campaign, where you can fight in the inner city and even at the Reichstag. The maps you're seeing on screen are actually in the Reichschancellery and Hermann Geringstrasse. Check Enlisted out by following the link in the description below. And when you do, you will receive a free bonus of 6 silver orders and 3 days of premium account. Okay, back to Hearts of Iron. Regular difficulty, I'm in mode, historical focuses. Poland, let's go. The theme is Battle of Berlin, so we will have to conquer Berlin and make it a big, spectacular battle. But first, let's strengthen the Polish state. Now, about my great-grandfather. See, there's a village here called Lenino, and it's where the first infantry division, named after Tadeusz Kościuszko, under the command of General Berling, was formed, and my great-grandfather was an artilleryman in that division. It was a Polish army, but it was under the command of the Soviet Union, formed when the counteroffensive against the Germans was happening, and my great-grandfather went all the way from here to Berlin. He was wounded twice, and I think I remember correctly that he participated in 17 battles, I'm not sure about the number though, and he might have been among the people who put Polish flags on the Reichstag. Now, I cannot verify that, it's a family legend that he was, but I cannot verify if that's true or not. And his name was Kazimierz. But I'll tell you more about him later. For now, let's build some civilian factories. It was an army under the USSR, so logic dictates we should ally ourselves with the USSR. So that's probably what I'm going to do here. Yes, we'll go communist and ally ourselves with the USSR, but I'm not sure what other moves we should do first. I'm thinking about conquering Romania and Lithuania, that would give us some extra production, and also manpower if we need it. Alternatively, I could disregard that and just focus on the defense against the initial German attack. Third option is to attack the Germans early, making sure they do not take Czechoslovakia and weakening them. Well, I can attack up to two countries, because otherwise we'll, they will get guaranteed by the Allies. So the options I have are either attacking Turkey and taking out Romania with them, or taking out Lithuania and Latvia. That would let me form the Commonwealth, giving me some more cores and a couple more factories. I think I will take Lithuania and Latvia this time, because I usually go for Romania as Poland. So let's do something different. As for research, basic research boosting research, production boosting research, and doctrine would be a firepower. Normally pure infantry would be our go-to, but I have to include some artillery, in homage to my great-grandfather. Our template also has recon, so we can keep that and pump some support equipment into recon. That's about it for now. Let's speed the game up and unpause. We cannot justify war goals yet, we have to turn communist first, or wait a bit and do Polish revanchism, then we can do it at 10% war score, even if we're not communist yet. Uh, we will join the common turn. For the Battle of Berlin to be the Battle of Berlin, we also want some Russians there. Our first hire is going to be Xavier Chernitsky, who is an old guard guy, and will supply us with some political power. Also, let's do Polish militarism. That's gonna give us quite a lot of population. Or rather, recruitable population. As well as some army experience that I can use to hone my templates. Mechanical computing. I will want some forts along the German border, but that can wait. Polish militarism is done. Now we want two things in this focus tree. We want to go left so that we can turn communist, and we want Polish revanchism so that we can attack people easily. This, however, requires the world tension to be at 10% to be effective, so we can take it a bit later. 
because the world tension will stay lower than that for a while. Let's go with internationalism first. Let's create a spy agency. Do we go? Okay, whatever. We want our spy agency and we want our decryption, but we don't want to go too heavily into it because it can cripple our economy. Time for a communist revolutionary. Localized training centers because we want German operatives. Spanish Civil War. There are some decent operatives here, but we want a German. Let's recruit one. 4859. That will just not do. J23 or J23. My Polish viewers will know. What I'm talking about. It's a character from a Polish TV drama about a military spy. Very good drama. Now let's just do Lithuania and Latvia. All right, and keep upgrading the spy agency until we get a second operative. Oh, forgot to select the focus. That's a mistake. Authoritarianism. We will want to do the referendum, so let's open up political discourse. And let's start decrypting the German ciphers. Let's improve work conditions and go left. Improving work conditions is a big investment, but stability does pay off in the end. I need five upgrades to get the extra agent. So we want one, two, three, four, and five. I'll get more later. Also, I do have the army experience, so let's uh, work on our divisions. Duplicate this. 20 inf, that's fine. Add a support artillery contingent. And some infantry to make it 20 with. 40 is better, but we don't have the experience. All the manpower. Save that. Also, create a new template. Just one cavalry bit. And it's going to serve both as quick deployment troops and as garrisons. So we have 40 units. I think I want a full army group, which means we need to train 80 more. My troops will not be well equipped, but um, that doesn't matter that much for defense. And I comment on pact. Absolutely not. Then go left, which gives us more communist support. And now it's time for Polish revanchism. When this finishes and when we get to 10 world tension, which should happen around the time that China starts fighting Japan, uh, we will be able to start justifying our war goals. And we do need to keep some political power saved for that. We are recruiting another operative. Oh, I can get another German already. Let's do that. Hermann Hartmann. No special skills, but he is German. That will give me bonuses. I guess Germany, of course. For now, just do that for him. That will give us a small bonus, um, you know, to fighting them, which will not change much, but it can help. I can modify our government, but I'm not going to. We're going to save that political power. We need it for the referendum and to go to war economy. Polish revanchism is complete. Now we have a lot of choices. Political commissars buffs our troops. Defensive focus lets us build factories and forts faster. While going down this path here gives us an additional research slot. And I think that's what we should do for now. Concentrated industry. I could hire an elusive gentleman, but I'm not going to be relying on spies heavily this game. Now we're just waiting for the world tension to go up to 10. Or for our government to switch to communism. After either of these things happen, we will be able to start justifying our war goals. I need to promote a general to a field marshal. See, we have field marshals with level 3, but we have generals with level 4. So it will actually be better to promote our general to a field marshal. And I'm going to do that to Władysław Anders. Why? Well, because another family member of mine fought in his army. It was a she, actually, an aunt of mine. Well, great, great something aunt. So he is going to be our new field marshal. Aggressive, organizer and charismatic. Well, we can't get aggressive assaulter, that needs a brilliant strategist, but offensive doctrine is good enough. As you can see, with Polish militarism we have quite a lot of manpower. Those for your plan and such focuses are pretty crap, but they open up the way to a research slot. Hindenburg disaster. And Chinese United Front, which means we're about to get enough world attention to justify war goals. Probably. National Defense Fund. Our troops are ready to invade Lithuania and Latvia. I just need some world tension. Japan attacked China and that should be sufficient. Can I justify war goals? Yes, yes I can. Okay, let's see if they have any modifiers. No. How about Lithuania? Yes, they do. Okay. So we want to start these wars simultaneously. I will first justify war goal on Lithuania and then on Latvia. Complete machine. Now we don't need to rush turning communist, which is why I will not waste my resources on discrediting the government. Let's do construction 3, because we have a bonus. Around the start of 1938 I should start preparing my forts, probably. And you guys exercise up. Now actually, I need to switch them into that other template that I made, 20 inf. You have a lot of time before we attack, so I can train them up a bit. Equipment is scarce, but uh, we are working on it. Actually, Lithuania doesn't have enough troops to block all of its border, so I'll just do manual attacks from here. Cypher for Germany is decrypted. Nice. Um, I guess I'll work on Italy a bit. I have a lot of political power. I suppose I will do anti-fascist raids. Yes, for that, 2% of stability. And to speed up our transition a bit. Won't do much, but it'll do something. Right, and finally we can do the research slot. Oh, come on, not a single... Ah, here it is. Communist event. So, what we're gonna do now is hold the national referendum. Done. 
switches us to communist, and right after that we'll do war economy. The Soviet Union is inviting me to their faction, but we don't want to join just yet. We want to join, just not yet. Still have countries to conquer first. I'm gonna need way more artillery and support equipment, and guns too, I'm gonna need way more stuff basically. If I attack the Germans before they took Czechoslovakia, that might give us a better chance of winning. It is something to consider. Defensive focus to speed up factory and fort construction. And a new research, radio. Four slots is decent enough. First justification is complete. I'm not going to declare yet. First of May, and this will finish on the first of May. Does it expire at the end of the first of May or at the start of the first of May? Can't wait for the Germans to attack me because Molotov Ribbentrop will automatically give them my territory if I'm in the common turn. Although, that's a dangerous and experimental, but what I could do is wait until Danzig of All War triggers and then join the common turn. It is risky, I'll have to think about it. No, I don't think I want to risk this. See, waiting for the Germans to attack would give me the advantage of being in a defensive war, but I don't want uh, to risk losing half my territory due to Mount of Ribbentrop. Now, if I'm correct, on the 1st of May this will still be valid. It is still valid, and we got the second one, so we can actually attack them simultaneously. Good, let's do that. We declared war on Lithuania and Latvia, let's activate the orders. Now, Lithuania doesn't have any troops here, because they don't have enough troops to cover the entire border, so let's just walk in. I don't need to waste manpower. Just use these guys. Go take these, go directly for Memo, and you go for their capital. And you go around and take their capital. And that's gonna be enough. Should not be able to defend it. Well, they did bring some troops in. Spain is done with the civil war, and Lithuania is done with being a separate country. Take all. Activate your orders and take Latvia. We can modify the government. I will hire an inventory expert. Probably should have done that a moment ago. Are you surrendering yet? Yes, you are. Good. Take all states. I guess I will accept and I will justify a war goal on Germany. Hopefully I can kill them or rather attack them before Czechoslovakia is absorbed, thus making the entire endeavor much easier. Now it's time for me to disclose another bit of the family history. So, the army, going from Lenina all the way to Berlin with my great-grandfather, stopped on the bank of the Wisła River, or Vistula is the English name, I think. And in Warsaw, there was the Warsaw Uprising. The Warsaw Uprising was crushed and it did not receive help from the army over here. There are varying theories about why it might have been, you know, the higher-ups in the Soviet Union being the overlords of the army, not allowing it to help, or um, from some other accounts I read, it could have been just incompetence of the command uh, not being able to cross the river properly and, you know, secure landing posts to transfer troops. Regardless, I do have a story about that. See, when the army was on this bank and the Warsaw Uprising was on this bank, a certain uncle, let's call him Uncle O, not to disclose too much personal information. I'm not sure if he was an, a relative or just a very good friend of my grandfather's, great-grandfather's, but he was called an uncle later on. He swam across the river to join the army, which is a feat in itself, it's not a small river. Must have been a very good swimmer. Anyways, he did join the army and proceeded further with the army. That Uncle O was later wounded by shrapnel and lost his eye. He had a glass one. My mother told me stories about meeting him and fearing that his glass eye would fall out. So that's Uncle O for you. Afterwards they proceeded further. Two more stories about that coming up later. Now it's time to prepare our armies to face the Germans. Let's switch all of you to infantry and distribute properly. One full army group. We'll use the field marshals as generals. Problem is, our armies don't really have equipment. Probably made too many troops. Nevertheless, let's utilize them. Go and attack. And since I'm not waiting those forts, I won't have enough time to make them. I guess I can make, like, level two everywhere. Yeah, really need more equipment, don't I? Let's make sure to set up our calf template to take care of the captured land and proclaim the Commonwealth. This will give me cores over here, which in turn will let me get more manpower. Polish Lithuanian Socialist Republic. It gave me cores on Lithuanian and Latvian states. Only have 42 factories, sadly, so I can't do the. Oh, sorry, 55 now. Good. Yeah, cores gave me a lot, which means I will be able to get the fifth research slot. And that's what I'm talking about a rush of Soviet troops eager to help. Now, we must remember the theme of Battle of Berlin, so we don't want to take it without noticing it. We want to set up a big, a huge even, battle here. But that's yet to come. Now, should we get an offense or a defense expert? Okay, I guess I'll get offense. We have 1.2 million troops in the field, but we do not have sufficient equipment. Cyclometer complete. Atomic Physics Institute. 
Oh, they're demanding Sudetenland already. That's a pity. But if we attack them before they do fate of Czechoslovakia, Czechoslovakia might still fight. We'll see. Also, this is my core territory, so we'll get extra stuff from it too. Yeah, I probably should have justified on them a bit earlier so that we could attack now before they get Sudetenland. In any case, the plan we're following is good as well. I think. We want to crush the Königsberg area first, and then concentrate our forces on defending against the Germans for a while, so that uh, they can lose some forces attacking us, and then counterattack. Preferably when they attack the Allies, because we do expect them to attack the Allies eventually. Oh, we got Zaorje, and they got Sudetenland. Additional research thought too. We're done with a level 2 force, should we go for level 3? Yes, yes we should. Let's do limited conscription, I'm gonna need the extra manpower. And start researching better guns. Our justification is complete. I think I should attack immediately, call the Allies, and declare war on Germany. We have our forts, we're still building some of them. All oh, right, I almost forgot. They have some planes too. Do not attack. The Soviets are the ones attacking, that's fine. I want my troops to just secure the border while we deal with Prussia. Expeditionary forces, curious. We don't want land lease, I'm not sure about the expeditionary forces. I think I'll let them handle it directly. Expeditionary forces means more work for me and also I would need to get more generals. Oh, we're actually advancing. Didn't expect that so quickly. Now I'm expecting the Soviet Union to dominate the Baltic Sea, thus not making it uh, necessary for me to secure myself against naval invasions. Might be wrong, we'll see about that. Let's do some propaganda. It's gonna cost me a lot of political power. And we have five research slots now. Let's do political commissars. It's gonna help our division recovery. Ideally, I would want to wait for them to fight the Allies before we press the attack. Because if we attack now, we'll just take a lot of casualties and probably not get much done. Oh, I was wrong about the Soviet Union securing the Baltic Sea. I will have to defend against naval invasions. That's fine though, we have the capability to do so. You will garrison the ports and the coast. I mean, I don't really need to garrison the coast, just the ports. How are we doing on equipment? Terribly. We're doing terribly on equipment. Yay, stability. Be a bit more aggressive. We want to get them out of here. Seems looks like we've secured a good front line, as long as we prevent further naval invasions. Now we wait for the opportunity to press the attack. Since we're fighting next to the Baltic Sea, I think it's a good time to bring you another story. See, when the army, with my great-grandfather and Uncle O, captured Kowobrzeg, which is around here, they have also conquered a liquor store. After the heroic capture of the liquor store, the spoils of war were distributed and consumed, to such an extent that when on the next day medals were given out for the battle and the capture of Kobrek, Uncle O did not participate, he did not wake up in time to receive his medal, all due to the capture of the liquor store. True story. I have my ciphers against Germany and Italy ready, I suppose, in order to have something to do, I'll decrypt Hungary as well. Sadly, Sudetenland is given up. Sudetenland is full of forts and mountains, and if Czechoslovakia kept it, they would easily be able to defend. Sadly, I attacked a bit too late for that. My mistake, I suppose. Let's do prepare for the next war to get some doctrine bonuses. And do atomic research. Four research bonuses. Oh, we're getting attritioned. Should probably build some infrastructure in the area. Oh no, looking good. The Germans can't really attack me. Fate of Czechoslovakia. Now, a lot will depend on that. If Czechoslovakia submits, I do have an army ready to cover uh, the new front line, that will happen, and Czechoslovakia is defiant and decides to oppose the Germans, the army will help them fight. Oh, they're trying their naval invasions. Fate of Czechoslovakia. Really? Well, that's unfortunate. This army will cover the new front line that just appeared. Actually, there will not be any troops here. What I can do is advance and capture this quickly. It should be possible for me to do so. Oh, right. Not really, because they automatically got their troops too. Yeah, I was a bit too slow, wasn't I? Now, once Hungary joins, this will become problematic, but for now we can get some easy gains. Right, looks like the front line is established. We got what we could. No need to waste resources. Halt. Not the perfect situation, but we did get some territory. There's a lot of Italians here. Didn't think they would take such an interest in this fight. Hmm, it is possible that us triggering the war early will force the Germans to not fight the Allies. But even if they don't, Italy will. Let's do the standardization of equipment, with which we'll be able to start producing the best guns. I do have a lot of spy network in Germany. I think it might be time to do collaboration governments. These are expensive operations. Let's become the spy master. That will give me an extra agent, who I will also send to Germany. Let's get a war industrialist. Oh, I'm not really building anything, am I? Let's get some more military factories going. Further from the front lines. No enemy south is being decrypted, but I don't really have more enemies. I guess I'll do Romania. Probably time to start investing in some more support equipment for our troops. We're gonna be researching that very soon. Let's start production of some anti-air. And research some motorized. We will need it for signal companies. Hungary joins the Axis. We are ready for it. Should I attack? They seem unprepared. Yes, they haven't called in. I can get some ground. 
Probably. Not much, but even if I can get just a few provinces, it will make things easier. And the Germans are arriving. So I didn't get much. New focus, not much else to be done here. I can get a couple of factories through these. Advanced computing machine. And the best guns. I think I will actually benefit more from waiting rather than from attacking right away, because the Soviet Union will get their penalties reduced over time, and once again I am waiting for the access to attack the Allies. Let's improve worker conditions, I do need the stability. These operations are taking quite a lot of resources, but they will lower the German surrender threshold, so they are worth it. Shock and awe. Let's modify our templates a bit. Support anti-air. Engineer company. Now, I made a bit of a mistake. I should have attacked them either before Czechoslovakia was, you know, deprived of Sudetenland, or later, right before Molotov Ribbentrop completed. Oh well, Belgium joins the Allies. Oh, finally, Italy is doing war with Greece. That will be our moment. Because when they attack, the Greeks will join the Allies, because they're guaranteed by the United Kingdom. Thus, pulling France into the war and Belgium too. France has had more time, so maybe they are better prepared. And even if they're not, the Germans will have to split their forces giving us easier access. Let's add signal companies, because why not? Trotsky is taken care of. Ah, damn it. Greece has joined the Comintern. Oh no, actually it's not a problem. Even though Greece has joined the Comintern, they have been guaranteed by the UK, and the UK is now at war with Italy. Means Italy will soon get. Do I want to give the French military access? No, because it would be silly of them to send troops to my territory. You have your own territory to defend, France. Deal with it. I will allow the Brits to get into my territory, though. Curious. If Germany does not honor the call to arms, Italy will be dealt with by the Allies. That is also a beneficial outcome for me, because France and Britain can deal with Italy on their own, especially with their fleets combined, without Germany attacking them on land. So if Germany does join the war, that will leave me an opening, and if Germany does not, the fate of Italy is sealed. Let's get an infantry equipment designer. We completed our mission, just one more. I need more convoys. I'm not getting enough land lease into my territory. I should do the focus that gives me three dockyards. Perhaps adding all those support companies was not such a great idea. Ah, we'll see. Now, best weapons. Oh, even more land lease. Yes, yes, thank you. The Germans have joined, which will make it maybe possible for me to press the attack. Let's see how their forces behave. They've retreated quite a lot of them, and the Netherlands are pushing. Let's go balanced, or maybe even cautious, and activate our attack orders. See, they have pulled back a lot of troops. And rightfully so, because the Netherlands are crushing them right now. Oh no, if they get to Berlin first, that will ruin the entire premise of the video. Are we progressing? No, not really. Let's maybe stop this for a little while. Let's work on our template. Duplicate it. Call it 40. Enough. And add some more infantry to it. I'm going to need to increase my conscription in order to get enough manpower for a 40 width template. So when we do, it will be very efficient. Romania joint access, we are ready for it. Although, I should have taken out Romania earlier. Extensive conscription. The general idea is to accumulate manpower and equipment, make sure we have our troops well equipped. Hopefully even enough to get them to 40 width. And then, once we're ready, ready, and the Germans have grinded their strength down a bit by fighting the Netherlands and France, and Britain in the Netherlands, we can strike. Don't really have any good focuses to complete. We'll do paramilitarism, it might come in handy, probably won't, and then probably research sharing. And we just need patience. Germany will be unable to exert their full force without defeating us or France. We'll just uh, develop ourselves and then crush them. More than these, of course we want it. We're infiltrating the German army to get more army intel. Ah, all the research buffs are done. I will gradually start switching my troops into the 40 with the template. I'm also going to exercise them. Because there's uh, a lot of Soviets on the border, the enemy should not attack us. Japan attacks the Philippines, which means the United States are soon going to join the wars. Only two more doctrines to go. Artillery modernization. One thing I should have done differently was probably to attack Turkey and Lithuania, and then use the Soviets to defeat Turkey while defeating Romania myself. Thus, we would get more factories and Romania would not join the Axis. The Allies are spoiling me with all of their gifts. Germany attack Yugoslavia. There's gonna be some bad times for Greece soon. And United States join. Romania has joined the war too. How's the equipment situation? Not that great. But I am receiving a lot of uh, new equipment as land lease. Let's switch everyone to 40 with. Of course, except all of the Lendleys. I don't have enough convoys, sadly, but I am still making them. 33 convoys only. So the Germans seem to keep sinking those convoys. That's unfortunate. At least the Lendleys I get from the Soviet Union should be reaching me. Yugoslavia is almost taken, and Greece will soon follow. But we are almost ready. Yugoslavia capitulates. Soviet Union no longer has the negative modifiers from the purge. Good. Tanatufa and an anti-Soviet pact. War with Greece. Greece is already at war with you, this is pointless. I feel like 
This focus should be skippable if you are, in fact, at war with Greece. Right, there's nothing else I want in the focus tree. Let's do technology sharing. Apparently my exercise is consuming quite a lot of resources. Oh, you're all trained up already. That was quick. Hmm, Greece is still resisting. Commendable. Well, the Germans have upped their ciphers. I guess I should invest in some more decryption. It will be useful once we actually start fighting. Luxembourg now joins. Good. They might even have a unit by now. Oh, did France advance? Surprising. They almost never do. I wish the Germans wouldn't be sinking all my convoys. Well, hey, I've trained up all my units. Well, almost all of them. Just five of them need to be exercised. And Greece is still holding on. Oh no, Hungary proclaimed Greater Hungary. We are done for now. Shock and awe. Final one. Now all that I need is more inventory equipment. I could reduce the production on other stuff, I guess. It is good to have some in reserves, but I guess we don't need that much. This should suffice, and now we can make more guns. Maybe like this. Get me more steel, Joseph. Oh, I think it's about time for another story. See, as I mentioned, my great-grandfather went from Lenino to Berlin. In the first battle, the Battle of Lenino, I guess, there were only seven people alive left in his unit. And it might have something to do with the fact that they were not very well equipped. They went to battle in their own boots. And afterwards they had to take the boots off of their fallen comrades in order to have proper boots. So yeah, not good times. And I checked, he had 18 medals, which might mean he was in 18 battles, but I'm, I'm not certain. Something like that. Anyway, he was buried with the medals. I have never seen them, but there were 18 of those. New participant. Oh, cool. Turkey joins the Allies. I did not expect that to happen. That might help quite a lot with Bulgaria, actually. Can I do full mobilization? I can, yes. And then we would have to do women in the workforce. Let's do that. Here we go. Lose some stability, but it doesn't really matter. Turkey sending me land lease. I hope it can go through here. I'm still struggling to have enough guns for my guys. We'll only attack once that is fulfilled. Oh, the Netherlands are being pushed back. We might need to act now, because if we lose the Netherlands, things will become much more difficult. Let's observe them closely, and if the situation looks dire, we will push. Some more piercing from that. Now, ideally, I would like to attack when shock and awe is ready, because it's gonna give us a huge boost. But if Amsterdam falls, the Netherlands will be close to capitulating, and we might need to push then, because otherwise things will be, you know, dire. Hungarian demands rejected. Okay, it's time for service by requirement. Amsterdam still stands. Good. Seems like some of that land lease is actually arriving. Probably the Soviet one. Good. Damn it. The Soviets have cancelled the land lease. How much equipment are we missing? Oh, we're not missing any. We actually have enough equipment. That's surprising yet wonderful. Cool. We can actually attack now. I will wait for shock and awe to be complete. And then... Then we'll attack. So they're cancelling the land lease because I have enough equipment. I guess it makes sense. Night vision time. Oh, civil war in Bulgaria. Good for us, I guess. But there's not a lot of those Bulgarians here. Of those that are on our side. But maybe Turkey will help them. I suppose I could have done a civil war in Germany by, you know, boosting uh, communism there. But it wouldn't be a real battle of Berlin if it was a civil war. We have almost all the research that we want. Yeah, I think we're ready. Let's just finish the latest doctrine and we'll attack. The Soviets should have accumulated a lot of equipment by now and the United States should be arriving soon. Actually, are they arriving? Is it... Yes, they have arrived in Romania. Hmm. Okay, good. So what time is it? It's about time. Balanced and just waiting for that cipher and for that technology. I want to activate the ciphers for the initial attack. Shock and awe is complete. Wonderful. Now just that cipher remains. Also, I'm out of stuff to research. We could do rocket artillery, but it's not going to be necessary. I guess I'll do synthetic oil, just so we can do something. And the ciphers are ready. Okay, here we go. Reveal intel of all our enemies. Put our troops on balanced. And activate. Activate all the orders. Let's see how well we can do against the Germans. Years of preparations. But um, they should be weaker than normal, because they didn't have us and they didn't have France to boost them. So, let's see, shall we? Unpause. Looking good. Looking not as good, but still good. Remember, we are on 40 width, fully equipped with full support. They should not stand a chance against us. Nice progress. We are on balanced, so we shouldn't be losing stuff needlessly. Although, I might want to go aggressive while the intel is active. No, no, that's too risky. Do your thing in a balanced manner. We're making decent progress, I think. There's not that much to see. Oh, 
and the United States are attacking from the other side. Is that because we occupied the Germans, or is it a coincidence that it happened right when we attacked? And we are pushing into Romania quite heavily. The lease from the Soviets is very welcome. Am I out of equipment? Yes, I am. Very much so. And I'm not getting enough steel to produce it. If the Americans beat me to Berlin, I'm gonna be very annoyed. No, no, we're making good progress. Oh, my front lines got weird. Fortunately, there's a lot of Soviet troops in our territory. Not a sentence that is often uttered. Yeah, having lots of Soviet troops in your territory doesn't sound like a good thing, does it? But it is a good thing here, because the enemy cannot break through. While we... well, yes, we can. 40 width with support is really powerful. I'm still only unbalanced. There's so many Soviet troops here that I could just take all my troops out of the front lines and we would probably be okay. At least on the defensive. Make sure to decipher Germany. It's the most difficult of the ciphers, but also the most important. Oh, maybe I can use a mission to capture the cipher. Yes, yes, I can. Start when you're ready. Oh, and we seem to have captured Kobzeg, the place where my great-grandfather's troops, well, it's not his troops, but the, the army he was among, captured that liquor store I talked about earlier. We're progressing very slowly in Germany, but we have taken out Slovakia. We are halfway through Hungary and through Romania. So the progress is actually really good. Let's check on the equipment. Yeah, that's not great. But it's enough. What is my war participation? Just 19%. United Kingdom 28. Yeah, I wonder what you did. Sank enemy ships. Occupation. Ah, my war score is growing very quickly. Good. Hungary has capitulated. We'll need to redo your orders. Wait a minute. Are there neutral countries here? Ah, uh, this bit went to Yugoslavia. I get it now. How did the United States get here? Oh, right. Through Turkey. Because Turkey is part of the... Allies. So close to Berlin, and yet so far away. Not yet. What I can do is run over to Lübeck, because this seems very undefended. And parallel to you guys. And here. We'll not be able to capture much territory, because there will be defenses eventually. But we did get a bit, and Romania has capitulated. That's actually gonna help a lot. When you're done with what you're doing, move over to Bulgaria. Since they are cleaning up uh, the resistance, I will put them on aggressive. We are now bordering Berlin. I will want to set up a huge battle, so don't attack Berlin directly yet. We're next to Berlin. We're now ready to commence uh, the Battle of Berlin. But these units, they don't seem like enough. I feel like it wouldn't do it justice. So how are we going to deal with it? Well, I think I need some more troops in the vicinity. I think this entire army would be enough to honor the battle. Let's get you positioned, shall we? Total manpower is half a million. I think having half a million soldiers attack Berlin at once is going to be enough to make it hmm, grand enough. I wish they added some more late game research, because if you stack bonuses, like stuff like this, and if you're not using tanks, which take a lot of research, or air, which also takes a lot of research, you're pretty much done by 1943. Of course, I know it's not the right way to play the game, but it's enough. And I like it that way. Hmm. Denmark didn't even have a chance to fight. See what I mean? All the infantry upgrades are done except for 9 Division 2. I'm researching the support companies. I have all the doctrines and all the artillery bonuses already, as well as industry. And all the research bonuses too. Come on, get in position. We want a battle to remember. Oh, Bulgaria surrendered. Good. 40 with infantry with support is doing great. We are in position. I think... It's time to give Adolf a good scare. Remember that meme where he's screaming in the bunker? Well, it's time for that to happen. Advance. Everyone, attack Berlin. 100,000 people are fighting currently, but we still have almost half a million in reserves. So they will be overwhelmed. Actually, I'm gonna keep the battle window open, because this is supposed to be the theme of the video. Well, let's make sure we give it justice. Polish troops crushing Berlin. Fall of Berlin, wonderful. The Brandenburg Gate collapsed. And this is actually an important bit, because... See this bit? The red and white of the Polish flag... Well, technically it's white and red. Never mind, though. The red and white of the Polish flag now flies above the Reichstag. And the last pockets of resistance have been dealt with. And here comes the last bit of family history. See, my great-grandfather, Kazimierz, he was supposedly among the people who put the flags on the Reichstag. Sorry, I, I'm mixing accents. See, in an English accent that would be Reichstag or something like that, but in a German it would be Reichstag. It's sometimes difficult to switch accents on the go. Anyway, 
So my great-grandfather was supposedly among the people who put the flag on the Reichstag. However, I could not verify that. I tried searching for records, but just uh, one of his names, I'm not gonna tell you which, because, you know, privacy, uh, matched up while the other didn't. So either the family history is wrong, or there were way more people doing it than it's reported, or, I don't know, maybe there's some mistake, maybe he wasn't among the people that put the flags on, but does it really matter? What he did is go all the way from here to here, helping us crush the Nazis. And yes, the army was formed under Soviet command. And yes, Poland did become a puppet of the Soviet Union after the war, and it did take us until 1989 to become a free nation. But if the Soviets and the Allies haven't defeated the Axis, my family likely wouldn't have survived. And yes, many of us are still bitter that after the war the Allies kind of betrayed us and left us in the Soviet sphere of influence. But you know what? We, as in the Polish, strived for a better tomorrow. And the better tomorrow has come, and it is now. So I would like to honor the sacrifice of my great-grandfather and many, many others who have fought the Nazi regime so that we can live the way we live today. I'm sorry for giving speeches and stuff like that. You came here to watch a game, but this is uh, personal for me because I don't often talk about family history and stuff like that on the channel. And that was my great-grandfather. I never met him, but I would be an ungrateful brat if I ignored his sacrifice. So, for Grandpa Kazimierz, let's finish them off. Unpausing. Polish juggernaut cannot be stopped. Oh, and Slovakia capitulates. Good. Now, the army I sent to Berlin, I will actually cancel their order and redistribute them along the front lines. Go back to balanced, reactivate all the orders, and crush them, please. Full of Rome. Oh, who took it? The Brits. And the Soviet Union is here as well. Nice. Now, can I actually do a collaboration government now? I do have 100% compliance. No, I don't. Why don't I have 100% compliance? Is that only after the war has concluded? What is my participation? 26%, which is the most any single country has. Nice. Bulgaria. Oh, right, the civil war in Bulgaria. Yeah. Oh, Germany's almost capitulating. Let's go super aggressive for the final stretch. We will still need to defeat Italy afterwards. And they have capitulated. And this is all in my territory. Now, can I actually create a collaboration government? Yes, I can. I wonder how that will affect the peace conference. Will I get all the territory if I do so? Polish-Lithuanian Socialist Republic. Looking very good. I think I'm going to try the collaboration government now. I haven't really tried this. So, collaboration government. Polish Germany. <laughs> now, I'm not sure. But if I'm correct, I might get all that territory in the peace conference. That would be very beneficial. Anyways, it is time to crush Italy and finish this war. Go. Finish them off. Actually, what I should have done is uh, the same thing with collaboration, but in Italy. That would give me the entirety of Italy too, probably. But it's too late for that. Germany has the crypto cipher, but I own Germany. Provisional government of the German Reich, but... I made that already. What's gonna happen if I accept this? Something weird, probably. Let's see. How many subjects do I have? Just one. So nothing happened. Good. And they're giving me quite a lot of factories, aren't they? 262. How wonderful. We could now use the German economy to strengthen our own. Lots of factories. Oh, and roads. Roads all over Poland. Actually, I should have been doing more collaboration governments, including Romania. That's not that important. Let's do the peace conference and see how this plays out. It's not like they can put up much resistance without Germany, but still, let's do our best. I imagine our forces are pushed forward by the zeal of having defeated the scourge of Europe. Did we capture Adolf alive? No matter. Okay, Germany. Ha ha ha, see? We're getting all that territory. Just because we created a collaboration government during the war, no other participants can take this from us. That's wonderful, I didn't actually know you could do that. So for sure I'm gonna take these, and I think I'd like to pop it some countries. More precisely, all the countries. Done. That's the end of the peace conference. Let's see what we got. We have Polish Germany, our puppet state that for some reason has no troops. Oh, they just didn't have enough time to deploy them. That's fine. They do have three million manpower that I could use, and lots of factories that I am actively using. Wait a minute. Are we still at war here? We're not at war, but somehow I'm occupying bits of Yugoslavia. You know what? I'm going to unpause this so that everything gets sorted. Dutch East Indies capitulated. Okay, Yugoslavia got their stuff back, that's fine. So, what did we get? We got Germany, all of it, as a collaboration government. Those collaboration governments are really wonderful. If you do that before the end of the war, you get all of the country. I should have done the same thing to Italy. That would have been a good move. I will remember that for later. 
we have Czech People's Republic as a puppet, we have Slovakia as a puppet, Hungary, or rather what used to be Hungary, and Romania, and Italy. All of it. Well, almost all of it. There's a bit of a republic here. Essentially, all of this that's not the Soviet Union and not Greece or Bulgaria is ours. Nice, isn't it? Yeah, the Kalpushin government thing actually did surprise me. It's a very powerful move that I have to remember. Anyways, that is it, isn't it? 221 factories, acceptable, some nice manpower, lots of troops and lots of power in Europe. We're still a member of the Comintern, so we have the backing of the Soviets, but we got all the spoils of war, because the Soviets don't really want to take territory directly, they want puppets. So, since I puppeted everyone in the first round, they didn't really get involved, they didn't even take Bessarabia. I would give it to them if they wanted it. Let's take our own faction. Italy, Germany, Poland, Hungary, Czech Republic, as well as Slovakia and Romania. All under the rule of Poland. I'm pretty sure we're much more powerful than the Soviet Union if counted together, but I would need some time to readjust our troops and so on. To beat them, but that doesn't really matter since we're friends. So the homage to Battle of Berlin and my great grandfather is complete. We also subjugated the Germany, Italy, Czech Republic, Slovakia, Hungary, and Romania as Poland. Yes, we could have done better by betraying the Soviet Union, moving against them, and then betraying the Allies, getting military access, and all that stuff. But that's not what we were after. We were just after Germany, and the rest are just spoils of war that we could take, so we did take. That is it for today, I hope you enjoyed this video, let me know what you think. I do have more stories like this, but I don't usually talk about personal stuff on the channel, but if it's interesting to you, I can share some more stories with you, of course without the personal details. But lots of my family members do have stories to share, or had stories to share. Some of them that survived the war are still alive, and I did talk to them about it quite a bit. So, once again, thank you for watching, and remember, this video had a sponsor that ties into the subject very tightly. A reminder, this video was sponsored by Enlisted, a multiplayer World War II FPS with excellent squad combat that can now take you straight into the Battle of Berlin. I think this is a game that many of you should enjoy, so do check it out by following the link in the description below. Okay, that's it for today. I will see you again soon. Goodbye.